Hey guys, thanks for dropping by the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a full review of my recently acquired Omega Seamaster Professional. And this guy is the 25th anniversary edition, the most I recent iteration. They brought back the wave dial on this guy. And I'll mention around fall of last year in 2019, I purchased the previous gen of the Omega Seamaster, which had the non-wave dial in a high gloss blue dial, which was gorgeous. So throughout uh, this review, I'll just briefly mention some differences they went with from um, the previous iteration to the current 25th anniversary model here. So first of all, uh, case dimensions uh, are slightly larger than previous iterations of the Omega Seamaster. Most Seamasters traditionally came in at the 41 millimeter size, or they had like a mid-size 36. This guy is a 42 millimeters across the case. And flipping to the sides, lug to lug uh, between my thumbs here is around 49 millimeters. Case thickness is 13 and a half millimeters, which is slightly thicker than previous iterations as well. But a lot of that is because they now they have a display case back and they also have the in-house caliber 8800 movement, which I'll discuss in more detail in a little bit. Now they did provide a host of dial color options for the 25th anniversary edition, but in general, I love the layout of uh, this version. So some of the significant changes from uh, the previous model I had is that they moved the date aperture from the three down to the six. And I think that lends more symmetry to the dial overall. The entire dial itself is now uh, made with laser etched in uh, ceramic. And you can kind of see a ghosted ceramic symbol just below the handset there. And in addition, um, you have a ceramic bezel insert that matches the same color as the dial. And now the helium escape valve is more of this uh, Reese's peanut butter cup style helium escape valve. It's a little more pronounced, which is kind of a letdown to me, but I guess they didn't want to remove that from the design language of the Omega Seamaster. So let's talk about some upgrades. So with the bezel, I think just the font itself that's etched in to the ceramic here is far more legible than the previous iteration of the Omega Seamaster. Now they kept the uh, scallop style bezel here, but they actually improved the action. It's a little easier to turn and it doesn't sound as hollow as the previous iteration of the Omega Seamaster as well. Now this dial has more dimensions than the past version as well. I do think they did a better job. They made the indices a little more bold. They stand out a little bit more. And I do think that the loom is uh, more potent than it was in the past. So I'll throw up a low light shot now, just so you can see how well this watch looms up. It's really incredible. And uh, in the past, I wasn't too impressed, but now with this current version of the Omega Seamaster, I do say that it does do a very good job and they continue with the buy loom application. So it's a nice feature to have. You have the, uh, the bezel pip as well as the, uh, the minute hand light up green and then the rest of the indices and hand stack light up blue. But that will just give you very quick orientation if you do plan to use the, uh, the unidirectional bezel as an elapsed time counter on the minute hand. Now, probably the biggest upgrade uh, that you had over, say, the Caliber 2500 is their new in-house Caliber 8800 movement, which gives you 55 hours of power reserve. The uh, beat rate is still uh, 25,200 vibrations per hour, so it's kind of like 3.5 hertz. If you unwind the screw-down crown, manually winding this movement is like butter just like it was for the 2500 calibers. But then if you flip the watch over, you now have a display case back, which showcases the amazing coaxial 8800 caliber movement, which is double certified. It's not just COSC certified, but it's a Matus certified chronometer, which just means it goes through its own battery of tests and it's actually certified to, um, to double the standard for timekeeping as cost because this can only deviate between zero 
and plus five seconds per day. Now the finishing on the Caliber 8800 inside this watch is really amazing. I mean, you're getting a very nice uh, Geneva wave pattern in an arabesque form. You have a silicone hairspring. You have DLC coated barrels. There are 35 jewels housed inside this movement and it's basically amagnetic. It's anti-magnetic to 15,000 Gauss, which is significantly more than a Rolex Melgaus. Now where I think they kind of took a step back is that because of a see-through case back here, there's no room for the uh, Omega Seahorse, which I think was an iconic symbol on the case back of their watches. And moreover, you don't have the um, simple bolt pattern or screw down pattern like before. This is kind of a, a custom screw down case. So you need a specific tool to open this up or you have to take it in for servicing and they have the tools to do it there. Okay, so finishing wise, I think it's fairly standard with the previous iteration of the Omega Seamaster, but it's done to a very high level. So you do have these like twisted lugs with a nice polished chamfer that runs down to the tip of a lug here. Uh, the sides of the lugs here, very finely brushed in a horizontal pattern. You do have a deeply etched in Omega logo on the crown. And then you get to the bracelet, which is still one of the most solid bracelets out of any luxury watch in the business, in my opinion. Each link is multifaceted and you have differential brushed and polished accents all along the length of the bracelet. My one complaint though is that it's non-tapering. It's uh, 20 millimeters at the head and it maintains 20 millimeters all the way to the clasp. I just would like to see a taper down before it reaches the clasp just to aid in the overall comfort. You have very solid double-sided screws that hold each link in individually for sizing. So just be very careful if you want to size this yourself because it's really just a slot screw head on either side and then you have a pin running all the way through. So you're going to have to uh, fix both heads back to keep the pin in place. Do not lose those screw heads. <laughs> and then you have the Omega class, which again, probably one of the best in the business. Very nice uh, finish on the clasp and you have high polished twin trigger release. Really nice milled out swing arm. This clasp has a very nicely individually milled out dive extension as well. But the best feature is if you look under the class, you have this push uh, button incremental toolless micro adjustment here. So you see if I push that button, this slides out just to give you a little more fine tuning, which is great, especially now that we're in the summer of 2020. If your wrist swells up, you can just give yourself a little bit extra wiggle room. So here's how the Omega Seamaster Professional sits on my 19 centimeter circumference wrist, or about seven and a half inches. Again, note that the clasp is quite long, but it does balance out the head of the watch quite well. Although I do wish it tapered down a little, but this watch also wears extremely well on a rubber strap, either the OEM strap, or you could pair it up with any aftermarket option you want. So then to summarize, uh, I'll just mention some of the uh, positive and negatives of this timepiece. I mean, in the plus column, it's incredible value for money. Yes, uh, these watches uh, do trend at around 6,000 Canadian dollars, but with that amount of money, you're getting an Omega in-house caliber that's double certified. And uh, again, basically a magnetic and extremely high power reserve and accuracy. You're getting an upgrade in materials. I love the ceramic um, on the dial and it's color matched perfectly to the ceramic bezel. The dial layout is a little bit better with the date aperture at the six. Overall larger and more prominent indices and better loom um, from previous iterations of the Omega Seamaster. Uh, potential things I'd like to see improve. One, they could probably do away with the uh, helium escape valve 
uh, at the 10 o'clock altogether, they could probably integrate it into the side of the case like Breitling and Rolex do. But I understand that they want to keep it as part of the iconic nature for this watch. Uh, while the case back is see-through, and it's really amazing to see that in-house movement, I do wish that they had that etched in uh, Seahorse logo somewhere on the watch, just to maintain more of the identity of this timepiece. And then lastly, I may get a little hate for this, but this bracelet overall, I just don't find it overly comfortable. It's just uh, really hefty on the bracelet and it doesn't taper. Uh, this watch sized up for my wrist comes in at about 186 grams, which, I mean, that's not terrible. It's under 200 grams and it gives you some wrist presence. But at the same time, it would be nice just to do something a little more to aid in comfort or cut down on the weight. But guys, please let me know in the comments below over the past 25 years, what's your favorite Omega Seamaster model and why? I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. Please consider subscribing, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.